oh my God, it's such a struggle. It doesn't even matter how many years I've been in this industry. Now that I'm solista, it's like if I'm starting all over again. Like I had, I'm going to give you an example of something. I'm not going to say the name of the band, but there's a singer of this band that passed away, but they still use the name, right? So then we were going to go, you know, half and half, you know, you know, or get paid the same. And you're like, Marisol's not Oscopo Durango. So how is she going to get paid? No, we're not going to go half and half. And I'm like, dude. What is up, everyone? I'm your host, Alan Aist, and this is Noche de Pendejadas, your favorite talk show turned podcast, en donde yo traigo a tus personas favoritas para platicar y posiblemente sacarles sus trapitos al sol. Please help me welcome my guest tonight, Marisol Terraza. ¿Cómo estás, ¿Cómo está? Let's start out by something very dangerous that I... It's you don't even time. know that it's no, dangerous. No, I don't. Que te dije, Until you're like, this is dangerous. And amigas, like, la Marisol me dijo que I me like iba a traer danger. un tequila y algo y me salió <clears throat> con el beatbox. Let me just say, that was the reason why I got so drunk the last time I got drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, fuimos <laughs> a, No, literally, that's why I'm just like, I'm just holding it porque no me lo quiero tomar. The last time I had a beatbox, fuimos... ¿Cuándo era? Fue para Navidad. I had like a little friend's Christmas party. Those are dangerous and anyways. they brought that out and it looked like agua de Jamaica. Yo, a it's todo it doesn't taste it, it like anything. So good. Yeah. It was literally eight o'clock. Y yo ya iba para mi casa. I was so sad because I missed that on the grupo. I missed that on everything. Porque así de borracho me puse. Diosito sabe why you went home. Literally. Pues Saludcita then. Cheers. Aquí vamos, amiga. Con todo lo que da. Mmm. Antes de que empecemos con la plática y todo, yo te quiero decir lo emocionado que estoy que estés aquí. Thank I know you. this has Likewise. been a long time in the making. Literally. Yes, because we keep on saying, you know, let's... How many? It's been since 2021. Holy yeah. shit. La primera vez que yo le mandé un mensaje, amigas, para que estuviera aquí con nosotros fue en el 2021. Y yeah. en ese tiempo no. estaba súper ocupada. Tenías para arriba, para abajo, para el centro y para adentro. Puras cosas doing? que hacer. What was I doing? I don't remember, pero me acuerdo que me habías dicho. Was I in Mexico? No me acuerdo. But I, I know I we had gone back a couple times back and forth on like, let's make this happen. Pero finalmente se pudo, amigas. So I'm super excited. I'm It's super honored. It's my pleasure. It's an honor for me. So for all the people, you know, it's the first time that we meet. It's like, you know, when you see each other, like on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Instagram, it's like, if you know the person, I'm like, yeah. And then people sometimes are like, now I know how like people that are like fans. They yeah. come and talk to you. So. I'm no, your, amigas, I'm yo your estaba fan super I'm your No, fan. I'm your fan. Literally, I'm your fan. yo And then we have the same nervioso. kind of dog. We, have, we do. Todavía estoy un poquito nervioso. Yo. Let this freaking sink in. Because this is like a dream come true. Normalmente, yo, ustedes saben que traemos a muchos influencers, pero de tener un artista aquí con nosotros so es sweet. algo que no pasa aquí. So oh, I'm super you. excited y estoy super emocionado de tenerte aquí para que te conozca y un poquito más y también la gente allá en casita. Pero antes de que empecemos, You're yo so quiero... You're so charismatic. Thank you. Super charismatic. Thank you. There's some people that are like, when they talk and you're like, ya cállate. Ah, no, but they're like, mm. you're very charismatic and it's easy, you know, it's, it flows. Thank you so much. Pero antes de que empecemos <laughs> con el chisme, yo le voy a pasar el micrófono a ella para que se presente y que nos diga un poquito más de quién es y qué hace. Bueno, uh, you know what? I don't know what I do anymore because I used to know what I, oh, that's my husband's phone. I'm going to say this because. Kind of killed. Buzz. Holy shit, I think I'm buzzing. I'm buzzed. I'm buzzing. I'm like, <laughs> I swear to God, it's like, it's because it's he, we know, we know, it's because we know each other. Y después de esa shot, <clears throat> ya la siento, amiga. Let me tell you about something really fast. So anyways, so he was my padrino of, in my, for, he's his best friend mm -hmm. since they were like super young and he was padrino de anillos and chupitos, la chupitos <gasps> was, was madrina de arra, so maybe that's gonna be something fun to talk about. For everybody who doesn't know me, I used to be in a group called Horoscopo Durango with my sister. She had black hair. She still has black hair, but she had a baby. Okay. And he's two years old and she's super dedicated to him. You know, she had him a little bit older, so she waited for the right moment, right time. It's never the right moment nor the right time. Yeah. Because I had my daughter when I was 19. I don't like saying this, but I'm a grandma. ¿De cuántos? ¿Cuántos uh, nietos so, tienes? I only have okay, one daughter. Okay. So one daughter and I have a grandson and a granddaughter. The other Aww. day I got yelled at in school because they're like, hey, mom, that's not the line. And I'm like, Shh. I am not the mom. I am the grandma. 
And I come, I, I don't know where to go. And they're like, so we're, we're really good friends on the principal and I. Ahorita ya estás como solista. You were a part of a very popular, very famous grupo, Horóscopos de Durango. Y yo por eso estoy un poquito nervioso, amigas, porque yo nunca en mi vida. Mira. Nunca it's, esto pasa, mira, esta noche de pendejadas. This. Es el tequila y también los nervios, oh, porque déjate una know. cosa. I grew shot. up listening. What I mean, you grew up? No, no, grew oh, up. Grew I grew up <laughs> listening to you and no your sister. Pendejas. You know, sus canciones, cinco minutos, oh. todo. So, el tenerte aquí es como un sueño realidad, te lo quiero decir honestamente. Like, no nomás lo estoy diciendo porque estás aquí. Because y'all know, amigas, ustedes saben que yo no nomás le digo <coughs> eso a todas las personas. I don't really say that to many guests, pero en verdad que sí, es un honor tenerte aquí. So, oh, para ya empezar con el chisme, amigas, yo voy a empezar con la primera pregunta que le pregunto a todos. ¿Cómo fue Marisol growing up? ¿Cómo fue tu infancia, amiga? Cuéntanos un poquito de eso. You know what? I had a really nice childhood. Thank God there wasn't like iPads or anything. We, we always on the bike. We used to play with hormigas. And I'm talking about like simple stuff because now I see my grandkids that are always on like an iPad on my phone and they know how to move it better than me. Yeah. It's crazy. Five and six years old. And the, the only difference in my life is that I loved seeing my dad play like instruments. So then okay. I started playing instruments. My first instrument was a keyboard, which my dad wanted me to have a teacher to teach me. But he, she was his teacher first. So she was hot. She, okay, now that I'm older, I understand this. So every Wednesday, this teacher would come. She was young. And I would play classical music, like Misty, Feelings. That's not classical, but other stuff, but reading music. And I didn't like that, so I would memorize the music. And she's like, you're memorizing because that doesn't go there. So I would play right and left and with pedals. So I was I like, a, like, a, like an octopus. Yes, it was not cute. It was not cute. So my dad would stay, stay there, but be watching the teacher every Wednesday. So then, Horoscopos de Urango already existed. Oh, okay. Yes, so then the group... In, initiated in 19, I don't know, it's going to be already 50 years old, La Agrupación. Oh, so shit. my dad's, okay. I'll say my dad's age, but not mine. My dad is 74. He started a long time ago in Chicago because I'm from the shy. I was born and raised in Chicago. My dad and my mom are from Durango. It's been a lot of years, but we were local for many years. We would play bodas, quinceañeras. And then I initiated in horoscopos when I was nine years old playing the keyboard. Yeah. So I was nine, I would play bodas and quinceañeras for four or five hours, but we were not duranguense. We were versatile, meaning okay. cumbias, rancheras. Son grupo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, los, los que ocupas en las, las bodas, they play everything. We even played, at that time, it was cow, Cowboy Dorado, este, ¿cómo se llama el otro? Um, oh my God, just like, you know, it, it fuimos, fuimos like, time went passing by, and then my sister incorporated a little bit later playing the trumpet, okay. not singing. And then she would do a little bit of coros and then she would sing one song, two songs, and I would sing, No te metes con mi cuco, I would sing. <gasps> Una de Maricela too. Um, like little stuff like that, but little incorporating of, and singing was not my thing. I was always really embarrassed. And then I would play the saxophone. The first song was El Novillo Despuntado that I ever played. And then other time somebody would leave the band Like my dad's like, sabes que ya se va a salir mi primo Pancho, tienes que aprenderte el acordeón. So I would play the accordion, but teclas, because I can't okay. play the botones, which my husband is really good at playing. Is he good at playing? But I think he's good at playing. I think he's good at playing. He plays me very well. Sorry, but I'm right there. Yeah. Acá tenemos público hoy, amigas, yes. por primera vez. Siento que también por eso me siento un poquito That's nervioso. That's good, you, because you're going to have a talk show and you're going to have public oh, and you're going to invite you. me again when you do. Normalmente I, es la invitada <laughs> and obviously Irma, pero hoy tenemos todo un público, so ando un poquito nervioso. And you have two But, different groups here. Es lo que me estaba diciendo. Yes. Cuéntanos un poquito más de saber a quién tenemos aquí con nosotros aquí en el público, aunque no los puedan ver. Who's here with us? So my husband is singer of Cumbre Norteña and his best friend, Is the bass player of Grupo Primavera. Nos cuentas un poquito de tu infancia yeah. y a lo que nos cuentas, obviamente empezaste a una temprana edad. Yo quiero saber, what was your first musical memory? Like, ¿Cuál fue tu primera memoria en donde tú dices, sabes qué? Like, <coughs> me gusta esto. I've always admired my dad. I wanted, you know what, since I was like maybe, I don't remember, but since I thought my dad was cool, he would wear like glasses, like the aviators, but because he was blind. But he oh, was okay. gangster. Like, he was you know, modern. And so I wanted to wear glasses and cowboy boots, which I would, the cowboy boots, not the glasses. So I wanted to play in the group with him. So I learned a song called El Negro Jose, which is a okay. cumbia. And they would let me play two, three songs. 
en horóscopos de Durango because I was a daddy's girl. Because you know how you were asking me if I'm daddy or mom's girl? I was always a daddy's girl. I think till this date, I hope my sister, my sister nor my brother didn't see this. I, I still got, I think I'm still the favorite. Do you think I'm the favorite? What do you think, babe? I think so El público too. dice que sí. I think so too. I don't know. I think there's like, you know when you you make your parents mad and then they go to the other sibling? I don't know if you have siblings. Do you? I do. I have three. Soy el más chiquito yo. Also so tengo here? una hermana y tengo dos hermanos. Who's the favorite? You know what's crazy? Ya si me preguntas ahora, te voy a decir que mi hermana, but growing up, it was me. I was always, well, with my mom. I was more of like a mommy's boy. Ya de adulto, yo siento como que mi hermana ya me quitó ese lugar, but definitely I was the favorite from the, my mom's side. Y ya de mi papá, pues ya fue mi hermana. You're still the favorite, right? From your mom? I'm like the second. Porque, porque es que, por, ¿sabes qué es? Mi hermana vive ya con mi mamá. Okay. O mi mamá vive con mi hermana. So I feel like as we got older, my sister got closer to my mom. I, I don't want to say I got distant, pero obviamente, pues mi hermana spends a lot of time with her so I feel like they got closer I feel okay. like they became almost one y me dejaron ahí a mí ah, but I would definitely have to say que mi hermana es el primer lugar de mi hermana de mi mamá I thought you were going to say you're the favorite I'm not how does that feel though I was always with them since I was in, in Orozco de Durango since I was nine so I was always with them every weekend playing bodas quinceañeras and my, my sister would stay with my mom so then I don't remember too much you know when something's like a blur I don't know if because maybe my mom was so sick and I didn't know she was sick. But I think Vicky, it's so funny. She's so intelligent. I'm going to say something about Vicky. She graduated National Honor Society. I mean, super smart. Yo era bien burra, but I was popular. I had, I don't know if you, you were like this in school, but I had different, I'm still friends with people that I went to grammar school and high school with. I was always jumping from clica to clica. Like I could okay. hang around by everybody. If it was the new waivers at that time, 90s people. Yes, new waivers. Las novias de los gangueros, because I went to an all-girl high school. Los gangueros, or the nerds. I could hang around by everybody, which was really cool, you know? Did you ever get in, like, in fights growing up? I got my ass whooped in high school. And I went to an all-girl school, so... Wait, wait, wait. Yo quiero saber un que sea... And I'm still una friends with her on Facebook. Not the one... The one I got my ass whooped for. Yo quiero saber por qué. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Por qué pasó la pelea? I was really good friends with her. A lot of people didn't want to be friends with her. But... She's really cool, you know, and she was so cool hasta esta fecha. And um, I didn't know that she was having a little thing with the other girl. Okay. So we would hang around a lot. She would go to the house and then this girl beat the shit out of me. She wiped my uniform and my hair all over third floor. Te traía mm -hmm. como trapeador. trapeador. <gasps> yes. And I got suspended. So they called my dad. Okay. And my dad's like, traía el chongo así. I was crying because they usually, that wasn't. The person, you know, you just get into conflict. I had a little bit of like resguñones and she beat my ass. She beat my ass and she's big. So my dad's like, ¿Y qué pasó? ¿Te defendiste? And I was like, Ooh! you know. So then I still got home and I got my ass whooped and I got suspended. So. Yo quiero platicar de un tema un poquito más, you know, dear to you. Obviamente, yeah. para los que no saben, tu mamá falleció a los 11 años. How was that for you? ¿Cómo te dices cuenta de lo que estaba pasando? ¿Y cómo tú reaccionaste <clears throat> a esa noticia? You know what? I was 11 and Vicky, Vicky was in, I was 10. Going okay. 11 and Vicky was in kindergarten. So my nietos in kindergarten, now that I'm an adult, well, you know, more responsible of adult, you know, más, you know, um, with más conciencia, more that you're a woman, you know, and you go through a bunch of stuff. It's like, holy shit, you know, I can't imagine being a mom and knowing that my daughter's in kindergarten, the other one's in third grade, and knowing that she knew she was going to die. So they told her. And then we saw her die, which I don't agree with that. I think that's, you know, I don't want to talk about that, but, and my sister was there too. But, um... I think it's something very dramatic, tra traumatic, and till this date, everybody's like, oh, se pasa, se pasa. The older I am, the more I need her. I would have loved for her to have been in my wedding or when my daughter was born, because I only have one daughter, and um, and when I was touring all the time, I always, I always had to get, like, nannies and put... I would have loved for my mom to have taken care of her. Also, there's one thing that my mom would always do. We would do competencias de canto. So um, my mom would make us our outfits, so she okay. knew how to cosay it and stuff. She was a little ghetto, you know, because we wanted a Cabbage Patch Kid, and they were so expensive, so she made us one, and it was really Aww. upsetting because hasta le hizo el ombliguito and the chichis, you know how they have them. But ¿De qué falleció? She was um, breast cancer. Yeah. But at, at those times, you know, I guess, I don't know. I don't understand, you know. I, I don't know. My dad doesn't really talk about this, but I guess if she didn't take care of it on time, so then it was stage four, like in a year and a half. 
Like it was quick. It was super quick. Nos cuentas un poquito de que obviamente ya de adulta sientes como yes. que te faltó mucho. How do you feel like te faltó de niña? As a child, I think everything, you kind of get adapted really fast to stuff. More than an adult. I think I would have had more problems losing my mom now than a child. I'm saying that because as a child, you know, when my dad remarried, you kind of get adapted to stuff. You you start growing up and it's kind of an everyday thing and you it's not that you forget your yeah. mom but you became a little I became a little bit rebelde I got married super young I I was just talking about this right now I don't like saying this in front of my husband but you know we're adults already I got married with my second boyfriend I'm talking about Manita Sudada my dad was super super strict with me and after I got married he let Vicky be a little bit more free para que no se la casara I really wished my dad wouldn't have been so strict. Maybe I wouldn't have done, you know, you know, my daughter came out out of this, you know, and I'm grateful and I adore her. And, but Vicky, she waited. She experienced a bunch. Of, she went to a bunch of bailes. I never went to bailes. I went to those fiestas that I played in every weekend. So my dad would never let me go out ever. Um, the novios were like, you sit in the front of the stairs and it's like, you had a time frame. Y no me lo podía ver los domingos. Mm -hmm. To church, because he would have to go to church with me. And then, although my dad smelled like crudo, like there's no tomorrow. And in the, you know, in the front of the house. Había visto en una entrevista que cuando falleció tu mamá, tú a la semana ya estabas trabajando. Yes. I've seen a little bit about that. Cuéntanos un poquito más de eso. How was the timeline? Obviamente fallece tu mamá y tú ya el fin de semana estabas trabajando. How was that for you as a child to like take that in? It's really crazy. I wouldn't be able to do that now if something were to happen, you know, God forbid to any family member, really good, alguien cercano de nuestros amigos. I can't do that. But at that age, I think everything's so moldeable, you know? My dad's like, mija, vamos, because we were a popular group for weddings and quinceañeras and private, just private parties in general, right? We, oh, we had work every weekend. So then my dad's like, we have una fiesta de los boliches. Es este, este con, uh, like, so, asociación or whatever, it's called group of boliches, right? Bowling. He's like, quieres ir? And I'm like, sí. I said, yes. So I had a choice. And I went, and then all of a sudden, they're like, un silencio para la esposa de don, Ar de don Armando, my dad. Se llama Armando Terrazas. And you know what? It's funny. Now that I think about it, I was in back of a keyboard, and I was just watching people, and I felt, I felt really confused. I, I didn't cry or anything, because I think I had cried already too much, but it, it, was, it was weird. I wouldn't have let my daughter... Go work. I would have been, you know, quédate con tus primas or whatever. But, you know, I think my dad. Te quiere distraer. No, to this date, he has his ética de trabajo. Not too long ago, I baptized somebody that, you know, that's, it's important in my, you know, my job. So then my dad's like, ¿Cómo es posible que vas a ir a bautizar y dejas de trabajar? I told my husband and I'm like, oh my God, he's right. But I already did it, you know. So it kind of made me learn that it's important to have this ética de trabajo. That you got to work no matter what happens. You know, the show has to go yeah. on. But now at this age, I would not be able to do it as a parent passing away. That yeah. shit don't roll right now. También estabas muy chiquita cuando pasó todo eso. Yes. So pi pienso que it took a while for you to understand. understand. Yeah, exactly. You didn't understand at the <clears throat> moment. Y ahora ya que estás, obviamente, you know, you're, you're older, you're wiser. I think it still affects me. Like, por ejemplo, I'm always chipileando a mi, a mi suegra. And I'm not saying that because my husband is here. I, I don't even care. I say this all the time because there's some people like, oh, es que posible que tu suegra... I was here this weekend in LA and my husband wasn't even here. I was hanging around by my suegra. Yeah. You know, I kind of see, I try to always look to this date and I'm old, fucking old. I tried always to find like this mother figure to like, like fill this vacío that I still have, you know? And, um, the other day, my grandson, he's like, ma, you have a ma, you have a, you know, a mom and a dad. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, your visa, tu visa abuelo, cause they love my dad. Is my dad. He's like, really? And your mom? And I go, my mom died when I was little. And she's like, he's like, oh, mom. Oh. And, and, and I'm like, holy shit. A, a six-year-old, because he's yeah. in kindergarten now, understands, you know. Or maybe he doesn't, and he just, maybe he saw my face. Yeah. I don't know. But it still, it affects me more as an adult than when I was a kid. I feel like especially now que tú estás obviamente con tu familia, your grandkids, yeah. that you want to give them that little of you, but you're like, well... I can't really show them my mom. I can't bring my mom along porque pues no está con nosotros. So your dad remarried. Yes. How was that for you? You know, was it easy to adapt to, you know, your dad remaking his life después de que tú pierdes a tu mamá? It was very difficult for me. 
very difficult because my, I'm a daddy's girl. So I was super, super jealous. And um, I couldn't accept it. I was mean to my stepmom. I was super mean for a long time. So it, you know, it, it affected our relationship for a lot of years. And then my brother, you know, came along, which is my brother and I, and, and I adore him. And it's just, you know, it's, it's very difficult to accept yeah. people that are new and just to know that they take the space or the place, you know, and it's difficult. Was there a moment for you on the, he says, sabes que, this is how it is. Esta es la nueva esposa de mi papá, la tengo que aceptar. No, I never accepted it. Um, I was always trying to see a way how I can leave. It was college or, no, so then I thought getting married mm -hmm. was a good way to leave the house because my dad's super old school to this day. Um, he's like, no, yo quiero que si no salen de la universidad, se van a salir de blanco, vestidas de la, 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 la iglesia. So I did. I got married and at 19. To try to leave your home. To get the fuck out, yeah. Oh, to how was that? Out. Not cool. It didn't last very long. So then, But I did. I have my daughter now, the only daughter I have. So that's the only good thing that came out. But if you want to leave your house, don't let that be the reason why, you know, because it's it's a really bad mistake because then you pay for it. Doble. Yes. Quiero hablar un poquito de tu hermana. How was growing up with your sisters? Se peleaban, se agarraban del chongo. ¿Cómo fue su relación growing up? We had a really nice relationship. We would play Barbies for hours. But then when I became a preteen, so then my dad would always be like, si está hablando con un muchacho, un niño, Dime. me dices. So she became a chismosa, like, you know, that's not cool. So then that's when start, things started not getting cool with us. But then she became a teenager and it, it was cool so my dad was cheap let me tell you this part talking about getting along so my vicky turned 15 and then i turned 19 you know and i got married so my dad's like so he comes to me mija ay deberías de ser tu, quince, tu boda junto con la quinceañera de vicky because i got married i i don't remember when it was in the summer i don't even want to remember it's just like a night it's like a nightmare he's like deberían que serlo juntos para que and, and then he would go to vicky so we had a quinceañera and the boda together. How was that? Vicky still to this day is like, I don't understand. That is not cool. Yes, it was not cool. So they thought she was my dama de honor because she was, you know, it, it was not cool. ¿Cómo hicieron eso? Like, I, I cannot imagine, like, the not. activities of, you Nobody know, una boda and a quinceañera. No one paid attention to Vicky. Oh, no one did. Pobrecita. Because so. yes. everybody was all entretenido entre ustedes, no? Because it looked like, you know, la dama de honor and us. La hearing. última muñeca. Yeah, there was no ultima, there was none of that. She didn't have no muñeca, no shoes, no nothing. We were on your rough patch. When do you feel like you guys became, obviamente, close again? You know what? When, um, when Duranguense started, which okay. was Duranguense in Chicago, was super popular. So then, yes, I think I had a, an amazing career like with a bunch of other stages. And, but I thought I was gangster when I was popular in Chicago. Because it's a whole different story, you know, when you go every weekend and you play in the clubs, you know, um, for people that are watching me and remember Noa Noa in Chicago, it doesn't exist anymore. Those were like the popping places. Um, okay, Corral, they would close five in the morning, so they would let us, give us free drinks and let us in, bring a bunch of friends. And then just when you do the other part, you know, like, cuando pasaron muchos años en Dos Locos Head and Antes Muerta Que Sencilla, it's so different, you know, you're playing big stages with a lot of people which i'm i'm not saying you know i didn't like it yes i loved it but it's different because you would go back home yeah and then you would do it again on friday saturday sunday and monday and it was cool como like, fue was eso like, yo quiero saber un poquito más de esa historia how did obviamente you were saying que eran super populares in chicago, chicago pero llegó un momento donde eran super populares Everywhere. ¿Cómo fue eso? How did that start? When did you guys start seeing like that rise to fame? It was super fast after Duranguense because a couple of our other, you know, um, colegas started getting super popular. And then the La Disquera asked us, okay, you know the song Dos Locos, right? Uh -huh. In Bachata. So they're like, you need to make it Duranguense. And we're like, man, we don't like that shit. <laughs> we don't like that song in that version. Yeah. So we're like, no, we don't want to do it. So then two discos passed and they kept on telling us why why are you stalling we don't want to do it and we did it y pegó and we didn't notice how big it was until one day we did la feria de san marcos okay and there was a presentation on it and it was louder than the presentation the people you know coreando and it was i don't know how many people how many people go into la feria de san marcos like when it's super packed do you know 
How many thousands? 20, was, 30. I have no... But our biggest crowd alone as Horoscopos was in Querétaro was 80,000 <gasps> people. That's a lot of people. It was 80,000 and just us. So then... And we still didn't have like the noción, but it was... It, it happened so fast. I mean, it took a long process. Yeah, years yeah. and years, but... Things started happening so fast, and then we started doing this, and then coming here, and then Guatemala. Just it's, it was fast. So pegó esa canción, and then after that, it just happened super fast. Yes, because then a bunch of other songs came, like Obsesión, Si La Quieres, Cinco Minutos, um, Como Te Va Mi Amor. It's just a bunch of other songs, you know? Hablando de Cinco Minutos, you know what's <clears throat> so crazy? Whenever I'm getting ready, and you can literally go check in my computer, I'm a huge Gloria Trevi fan, right? Like... I love her. <clears throat> so obviously, ella tiene su canción Cinco Minutos. I love your guys' version really? better. Oh, and you. that's a huge statement for me to say porque honestamente like I love She's Gloria gangster. Trevi I love her but there's a there's something about the way you guys la interpretaron there's a, something about the way you guys you know sing it and just the Duranguens and everything about it that literally I was like no this is my original like yo miro esa canción como mi, mi original you know so esa canción sale how did that change your guys' life? it's because it was already like those you know the locos antes muerta all of them had been out already so then they're like you know what um gloria trevi wants to do a dueto with you guys in monterrey and i don't even know where we were at it was all over the place so then we're like that's some cool shit i go to vicky and she's like well yeah well, we went to monterrey she was there we recorded it together vicky directed it she directed gloria and she's awesome she's really good she's super professional professional and v vicky's like you know do this part like this or this part like that and vicky's bossy she's bossy she's like yo vengo aquí en control control and gloria was like Let's do this. And it was cool. And we did a couple presentations together. We did the billboards. I think we did. I, we did the Grammys too. It did open us to another public, which is the gay public, which I adore. You know, every year, we would do Blue Papi tours, which is all over the country. Okay. And that I do miss because I do miss... You know, touring. You know what's so clubs. crazy? Ahorita que me dices que tienes hasta, you know, duos con Gloria Trevi. I have yeah. never seen them. El video que yo siempre, when it comes to cinco minutos, it's actually the medley you guys have. Es un video en YouTube que tienen, están presentándose, no me acuerdo en dónde, but it's cantan. Billboards. Is she wearing like. No, 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 no. It's not an award show. You guys are literally just doing a bunch of songs, and cinco minutos is the first song que empiezan a cantar. Does she come out? No, no, no. It's just oh, YouTube. Oh, okay, it's just okay. YouTube. Empiezan a cantar. Es, es, un, <coughs> es un como. Es un video donde, donde cantan muchas de sus canciones en cinco minutos es la primera canción que canta. I still do that. I no. love that song. Mm. Like, esta es una de las canciones, amigas, que honestamente, every single time I have a, like, a long road trip, me la pongo. Oh, thank you. To me, it's a, it, uh, it's a pleasure for me. Seeing you grow, it's, it's awesome. Because you're going to have a show. Thank you. No. Ojalá que sí, amigas. Bubble, oh, ahorita me lo estoy dudando por lo nervioso que estoy, pero no. yo sé que un día los nervios se me van a quitar <clears throat> y lo voy a tener. Hablamos de tu carrera musical and when it started picking up with your sister. Obviamente, cuando eso estaba pasando, was there anyone around you, you know, family members, friends, que dudaban in the success que pudieran tener ustedes? Not family member, but um, it's in the industry. They're, they would tell my... The people from La Isquera are like, ¿Sabes qué? Pon a tus hijas enfrente a cantar. Or, and I didn't like singing. And Vicky would play. We would both play instruments. It wasn't the singing. Well, Vicky more, yeah. Because Vicky went to... Um, we, went to we went to college. Yes, we went to college. So we were in the University of St. Xavier in Chicago. I went to UIC okay. also. And she would do music. She took music theory and she was an opera. I wasn't an opera. I was just, God damn, Diosito Santo, you're so big. I was so burra, but I, I studied so hard. It's like stuff para que se me queden. It's dif difficult, but not with the instruments. It's easier. So um, they would be like, you know what? It's a man's world. I think it's a bad idea. And as soon as we both started singing it, it worked even better. It became your guys' world. Yeah, because it was Vicky and the other guys doing los huetos like those locos and then Vicky alone and then again him and Vicky and then both of us and then both of us all the time what was <clears> your guys' <throat> like aha moment on the stage vieron sabes que en verdad si la podemos hacer en grande oh my god I don't even know nobody's, nobody's ever asked me that um, no tuvieron una canción that you feel like oh my god this literally skyrocketed como te va mi amor yeah in Mexico because Mexico events I'm not saying that the US that I don't like them, I love them, I love any event, but Mexico event, they're so entregados, it's thousands of people, it's outside, 
people llevan cartelones, te llevan hasta dulcecitos, te llevan hasta mole. One time that I played in Puebla, that I said an interview, and I'm like, I said an interview. Me encanta el, el mole de, de Puebla. There was a shitload of people bringing me mole. I didn't know they were going to put a pulga or something, so I couldn't eat it because I'm scared. But you know, people are, it's, it's so different in Mexico. Our paisas are gangster. No, I love Mexico. And la gente del Salvador, también Guatemala, that we've been there. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know what? I, I was doing Top Chef in the beginning of last year. And uh -huh. people even in Colombia, they're like, ¿Y tu hermana? And I'm like, what the hell? Like, that's really cool. And I think those are things that, those are the things that te lleva siempre en el corazón. You know what's funny? Ahorita que mencionas Top Chef, I think the last time, because I did say 2021 was when we first started talking about this. La última vez pienso que te mandé mensaje about like to like catch up and be like, hey, like, do you still want to do it? Me acuerdo que me habías dicho that you were doing Top Bogotá, Chef. Yeah. You went to, it was in Colombia? It was in Bogota. It's because you, it's in Telemundo, but you film it in Bogota. Okay. So I was living there from February till June. How was that? Obviamente, te sales de tu comfort zone que es Chicago, How was that for you? You know what? I've been homesick for the last three years, but this time it's like this homesick of I'm doing something so cool because I'm cooking. I'm not on stage, which I miss it, you know, but um, you're up with a bunch of colegas, like people like Laura Zapata, Gaby Spanik, you know, it's like people that you admire and, and, and you're not doing it. It's kind of out of your comfort zone. So then we would take classes, you know, with the chef. So you don't, no te tan pendeja, you know, cooking, you know, but it was really fun. I loved it. It's one of my favorite projects. Would you go back? To Bogotá? Uh -huh. Oh, of course. I loved it. People are so querendones. Like, allá son bien acogedores. How they say when they would say that, I'm like, what do you mean acogedor? I mean, what, what, what does that mean to you? What was your schedule like when it came <clears throat> down to filming a show like that? Holy shit. You know what? That was a hardcore show. I've done other stuff like La Reina de la Canción. Mm -hmm. We were judges. I don't know if you remember that one. They were looking for the next regional Mexican singer. So the judges were Lucero. Um, Poncho Lizarraga from, from Recodo and Vicky and I. So it was pretty cool. But that one was a little bit, it was hardcore too, but not as Top Chef. Top Chef, te tienen al, al pelo. La madrugada. You wake up at six, you go for makeup, and then you're, you maybe finish at eight, nine, doesn't matter. I don't, I don't know. There's not like a, a schedule. And after that, you take um, private classes with the chef. Not everybody, we did or I did because there was people that knew how to cook and I didn't want to look that stupid. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Especially on television. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes you'll be cooking like a head or testicles. I'm being serious. A heart. Me tocó un corazón and I didn't know what to do. I don't know if you know who Arturo Peniche is. He's an actor. Um, you know, old school like me, but, but he's, he's super popular. I would ask him because I was cooking I'm like, oh, chingo, se cocina marisola. Le sí, así, así. So then, You know, and Germán Montero también, which I adore. He used to be in Arrolladora. He was there. So it's, it was, it was really nice. It was, it was nice. Era una experiencia bonita que te tocó yeah. vivir, obviamente. And Gaby Spanik was La Usurpadora. No, you remember that yeah, novela. Yeah, I, I love that novela. Yeah. I, you know what's so crazy? Mucha gente siempre me pregunta de, cuando yo hablo de mi infancia poquito, a lot of people always get shocked that I didn't grow up with like Disney Channel, like Cartoon Network. Yo crecí on novelas. Yo cuando estaba chiquito, obviamente. Which one was your favorite one? Tengo muchas. Okay, so I loved Amor Real. I the one with the big. Estaba esta Adela Noriega. Okay, okay, okay. Con los vestidotes grandes. I saw that. Yo me acuerdo tenía como quiero decir 10 años y yo me sentaba con mi abuelita y con mi mamá a tomarnos nuestro cafecito. A los 10 años yo tomaba café. No, no. Salud for your cafecito. Salud. I'm like, you know what's so crazy though? I always say this like as an adult, I'm not really a coffee drinker. Pero de chiquito me encantaba el café. Me acuerdo que mi abuelita me lo servía mitad leche mitad agua y con poquito de café mm. y me gustaba ponerle las galletitas and just to kind of like you know estar con ellas en ese momento y yo me acuerdo que pues crecí con muchas novelas I'm gonna tell you which one mine is mm. Soñadoras you, you, you don't even know which one that is Soñadoras es Araceli Arámbula Angélica is uh, that the vale. remake of um, Muchachitas como tú I don't know I have no there's a there's a there's a remake I think that might be the remake. Porque yo me acuerdo cuando, cuando miraba novelas. Novela. Is it about like four friends? Yes. Una, yo me acuerdo, ¿cómo se llama esa actriz? La que hizo la de, she had like a fake, she, she was like big. 
in one of the storylines. ¿Cómo se llama esa actriz? Like one of them was poor. She would fake it to be rich. Angélica, Angélica Vale. Yeah. So it's oh, it's Angélica. Yeah, they made a remake. Yeah. So cuando yo la miré, se llamaba Muchachitas Como Tú. Estaba, no Angélica Vale, pero había una muchachita que se parecía mucho a Angélica Vale. Pues la muchacha that would fake being rich. ¿Cómo se llama? If you guys know, you guys know. Déjenme en los comentarios, amigas, si se acuerdan de esa novela. Yes. No me acuerdo, so but that's crazy. So Kuno Becker. So that's sorry, babe. Sorry, babe. So he was my like my crush. Not no more. He's not my crush no more. Cause he had he come out with a little Mercedes. Creo que se enamoró. If I'm not mistaken, I don't remember because he was the main one. He was the rich one, and I think Angelica Vale fell was in love evil? with one of them. He was evil. He was bad. Okay, it is the same move. Porque me acuerdo que. En la de muchachitas como tú. ¿Estás en high school o so prepa over there? Prepa, they were like okay. in, a, in a, like a musical school, in the remake. Oh. Eran como actrices, cantantes, like girls trying to like be someone big. Y me acuerdo de that person um, in this version era un malo y se estaba con Angelique Boyer. That was like his partner in that novela. I'm watch it now. That was actually one of Angelique's first movies. Novelas. Really? I'm gonna watch it now. Carrusel de niñas, carrusel. Or... María Mercedes, I, me tocó a mí at that time. María Mercedes es Talía. Talía. Yes. Con las, con las Marías, cuando hizo yes. todas las Marías. Um, Rosa Salvaje es Verónica Castro. That's how old. That's how God, Verónica that's Castro is the boss, old. though. I She's love her. Gangster. I love her. She's like la villana. Yeah. Ya empezamos a platicar mucho de las novelas, amigas. I'm gonna take it back. I love novelas. Back. Love I love novelas. You know what's so crazy though? Ya, ya no las miro mucho. No, I, I have either. not watched a novela in a long time. Soñador is my last one. I think that was 1990 something. Yes, that's my. I want to drink to this one because you're that's, like that's, cheers. You you're know like that's been a long time. You know you're time. fucking old when you do it. I that. feel like now, como que las novelas ya no las hacen igual que antes. No. Quiero decir eso porque hasta mi abuelita, güey, ya anda viendo novelas turquesas, ya anda oh, viendo novelas ni en su idioma. My suegra, I was watching it the other day, so one just finished. Okay, so Rosa Salvaje, Laura Zapata came out okay. like the mean one. She was mean. I feel like she's mean in person. That's just my opinion. You know what she's. She's she, have really you met her? Cool. She was in Top Chef with oh, me. Okay, 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 okay. She's cool. She was my martini um, weekends girl. Nunca la he conocido en persona, pero siento como que tuviera miedo conocerla. She's very pretty. She looks really good. She takes care of herself. Is she She's intimidating? Yes. A la mirada. Yes. Eso es lo que yo pienso. ¿Sabes qué? Porque yo pienso como que tengo la imagen de villana. Tengo la imagen de, you know, the, la mala de la historia. Soy ahora de adulto. Digo, ay, no, tengo miedo en conocerla porque no vaya siendo que sea igual que el personaje. We were doing pasta and she's like, cariño, ya terminaste de la pasta. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like right? it was, it was great. So my husband went to Bogotá and we were cracked, right? She's cool, like joking. She's hilarious. I would She's love to. Scary. Es hermana de Talia, ¿no? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talia. A ver si un día que me la tope, amigas, I hope que tenga una buena experiencia con ella porque sí me da miedo. I feel like she's one of those villains on television que sí me da miedo. ¿Sabes she quién could también? Be a villain. She could Who's be. like another good villain que tú sientes como... Gaby Spani. We literally sidetracked, amigas. Empezamos a hablar de... I sidetracked, de, especially when I'm Literal. Drinking. Es el tequila, amigas, literal. Did you water it down? Did you guys water no. it down? No. I think it's the ice. But I'll chug it with you. Ay, amigas, yo tengo miedo. Quiero platicar un poquito, obviamente, de tu carrera and being a woman in this male-dominated <coughs> world. How was it like for you, obviamente, siendo una mujer en un género dominado por los hombres? Oh, my God, it's such a struggle. It doesn't even matter how many years I've been in this industry. Now that I'm solista, it's like if I'm starting all over again. Like I had, I'm going to give you an example of something. I'm not going to say the name of the band, but there's a singer of this band that passed away, but they still use the name, right? So then we were going to go, you know, half and half, you know, you know, or get paid the same. And they're like, Marisol's not Oscopo Durango. So how is she going to get paid? No, we're not going to go half and half. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, people. This is really mean. And you know, like I need to defend myself because yeah. I'm a girl. And then all these guys, there's very little women. That's why I admire Jenny. And Jenny was, she was a really good friend of mine. I don't like talking about her because they're not going to be like, oh, she's using her. No, I don't want to, but I loved her. Um, and I'm like, Well, the singer's dead and you're using the name anyways. Yeah. At least I'm alive. I'm like, oh my God, Diosito Santo, I, I told you I was going to be a better person this year. But <laughs> people make me so mad and they make me want to be mean, you know. But it's such a struggle. Yeah. Even when we were doing really super well. No, las viejas or this and that. And it's it's a struggle being a girl, a woman in the region of Mexican. I think it will always be for a while. Yeah. Now that I see Peso Pluma, you know, Carol G, like a bunch of people, you know, like, hasta usando, you know, este, Tejanas. I think they've made it so much bigger and I and I think it's awesome. But being a woman in regional Mexican, I think it's still going to be very difficult for a while. 
Did you ever have a moment in the two he says, Sabes que yo ya no puedo más con esto? Like, I'm going to stop Last and week, I'm going to quit. This week, a couple of days ago, all the time, all the time, now that I'm solista, um, I had la fortuna, not this, this past year I was in, in, in Bogotá, but the year prior to that, I was opening los conciertos for Julian and for Julian Alvarez mm -hmm. and for Alfredito Olivas. And that was my job. And then I was in Televisa doing Las Estrellas Bailan Con Hoy, which I do not dance. So you know how difficult that was for me. That was horrendous. I'm like, I have two left feet. So it was so bad. So, and it's still difficult, you know, yeah. like, oh no, my, you know, La Vieja. And it's like, God damn, it doesn't matter how much you hustle or how much great things has happened in my career, in our career. I'm talking about now Vicky and me. It's, it's, it's very difficult being a woman in regional Mexican because Men can be really evil. Yeah. You know? What do you think for you, obviamente, ya con tantos años de carrera, what <clears throat> was that difficult, like, obstacle que obviamente you've overcame? I don't think I've, over I've overcome it. It keeps on being more difficult. And not only that, the older you are, they're like, no, ya está bien vieja, ya pasó de moda. Okay, so there's groups that are my colegas that I'm not going to say that have been in the industry for 40, 50 years They're not old for them. Yeah. You know, they're still cool, but they're men. Yeah. So it's different. They're, they're in wheelchairs singing on stage. I'm sorry, God. And then, you know, there are people that can't even sing, but it's okay. Yeah. But if a woman starts getting a little bit older or, you know, I don't know, it's, it's not cool for the public, you know, or for a lot of people. Not everybody. Not everybody's like that. But no, yeah, las viejas, you know, viejitas. And it's, it's sad. I'm going to say this in public, but. I was having a really hard time at one at one point, like with comments. I think I was just going through a, a, a personal situation. So I messaged Chiquis. And then I'm like, how do you handle this? Yeah. And, you know, she was explaining to me. And I'm like, God damn, if it wasn't her mom, it's not her, you know, because I can't think of another person that has comments or can handle things with such grace. Yeah. And I'm like, who can I ask? And that's who I asked. And I'm like, you know what? I got to get my shit together. She's younger than you and you can't handle this shit. So... Yeah, so it really helped me. Nos platicas un poquito que, you know, you've seen those comments, yes. you, they've gone into you. ¿Qué es lo que tú haces, obviamente, to like brush it off? You know what? Um, lately, I even leave the comments there. Yeah. Because like our followers, they start defending you and they start fighting with that person. And I, I try to brush it off, but there's days, you're, you have bad yeah. days, you know, and you're like, why am I reading this shit? When you have... A hundred comments that are good, but then you see that one comment that tells you, but it's un big story, una momia de Guanajuato the other day. told me, and I was like, this is me. <laughs> and I had to stop myself. Because then I'm like, I started swearing like a storm. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my Instagram taken down. I'm going to get in trouble. Because even they do, they do that, you know? It's yeah. really sad, you know, they take them. Yes. So I'm like, you know, chill, you know, focus on other stuff. Please. So, but yes, I, I totally understand you. I try not to read, but then I don't know. Sometimes it happens. You're human. People forget yes. that you're human. Te miran como la artista. Te miran como this big deal that they forget que al fin del día tú eres un humano igual que ellos y que tú tienes sentimientos. Literally, antes de que llegaras, me habían comentado a mí que parecía payaso. Y yo ya estaba listo de responder con video. Not through text. Video, porque era en TikTok. And I was like, fuck it. Let me go ahead and reply back. But then I stopped myself and I was like, you know what? No, esto es lo que esta persona quería. Ni yes. foto tienen, güey. Y están comentando esto, like payaso yo, payaso ustedes, que literal están comentando cosas. Thank you. No, pero sabes Amazing. que la, el, el lo que es, la, la, la gente le gusta comentar cosas que ni al caso. Para enchilarte, te para enchilarte. Yeah, And sometimes they do get me. Sometimes I'm like, you know what, I have the time of day, pero no más porque tengo el time of day significa que it got to me. Ah, it all did. I imagine I'm like, it got to me. But it's crazy mm. with the comentarios. Let me tell you what's happened to me on stage. And I'm pretty sure it's, hap it's happened to a bunch of people that I know. They're just not going to talk about it. I am. So then sometimes I'm singing a song and then they'll, maybe they're drunk, you know? They'll be like, like, um, yeah. So then they'll be like, it depends the mood and if, because I drink on stage. Mm -hmm. Lately, I can't drink as much. I got super sick doing Top Chef. Super sick. So then, let me tell you really fast. So people, you know, when you feel that something's wrong, you need to listen to your body. I was listening. I knew something was wrong, but they're like, no, tienes gastritis. It was not gastritis. So my bile duct got clogged. Oh, shit. It cicatrizó. So then I think I am not a doctor by means. So then your juices have to go through there, you know, and, you know, quemar todo. It was going to my blood. 
So then my eyes, like the white part was yellow. This was yellow. So I did un reto en la República Dominicana. And I texted my husband. I'm like, oh, you know what? I feel so fucking sick. I think I'm going to die. That's how sick I felt. Oh, my God. So then I won el reto. Laura Zapata and all them. So then um, I got home. Like, you know, when you have to hospitalize, you need to look for a gastroenterologist. So my next door neighbor, which we get drunk all the time. Yes. He's an anesthesiologist. He saw me. He went to go take me a drink. But I was sitting outside like this. I felt like shit. So he's like, holy shit. You look like a highlighter. And I'm like, I'm really sick. They're looking for Next day I was in the hospital. So then you need to listen to your body. If you feel something is wrong, it's because something is wrong. So I think there was a point to this. And what happened? What was oh. I? She's like, I'm oh. drunk now. Ah! No. Pero que so the, okay. doctor y que te dice. Oh my God. So then it's está cicatrizado. So then they put a clip so they can open it. So then regreso a Bogotá and it gets infected. Oh my God. So I have to come back out of the, all the way to Chicago, seven hours. And then they have to put me in the hospital and then I go back. Because, you know, okay. I try to be responsible. And then I, I win the reto. Just because I win, they have to throw me out. I come back and then go back. So it's like four or five times. And yes, then, then, then I had to like leave. But listen to your body. But yeah, I think my dog, my, my next door neighbor, he's not my doctor, but my next door neighbor. You thank him. Porque yes, si no, no they, couldn't vida, find, yeah. they couldn't find a gastroenterologo. So then they me metieron al hospital. So then I was like there for like a while. So then sometimes they're like, oh, estás delgada. You know, what did you do? And I'm like, nada. Ah, I'm like, like drink. No, and you know what's crazy too? After gastric sleeve though, sin mentir, amigas, siento como que... That's that's very delicado. You have to watch yourself, like check your levels, your pinche vejez la odio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You need to, you know, tratar de renovarte and try to look good. And, and it makes you feel good yeah. also. It's not so much, you know, it's, it makes you feel good. Talking about aging and how that makes you feel. Nos acabas de platicar un poquito de que pues, how is it like aging as a woman in this industry? How do you, what is your take on that? I think it's really hard. Even people that are presentadores or, you know, even the news. Because I have friends that are like, que están en las noticias. And they're like, you know what? I think they're going to fire me because I'm old. And I'm like, and they're not really that old. Yeah. If you mean, I'm talking about old, like you see your parents and you think they're old, but now that you're getting closer to their age, not they're closer to their age, you know, but you're like, holy shit, it's so unfair. You work so many years, you go to college. I'm talking about people that I know, you know, and it's in any industry, but our industry, like ours, yeah. it's so difficult. Yeah. It's so, it's mean. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with, also how fast the industry is. It Porque is. even though I'm young, amigas, hay a veces donde yo también me siento como que, güey, ya me estoy poniendo viejo. Tengo 26. Voy a cumplir 26 este año. Really? Pero I thought cuando, you were 21. No, I told my I husband. I am going to be Anna 26. I'm going to be so little. No, ya estoy hasta con canas en el culo, amigas. Oh. But you know what's crazy? There's oh times God. where you I'm like... You die, them. Literally. I'm like, otra shot. To die in the culo. I'm li- <laughs> not to die in the culo. <laughs> Yo ya no, amigas, porque siento como que no estoy aquí, pero sí lo estoy. Um, I saw that. Me puso más, amiga. Chinga su madre. Vamos. And I have a flight tomorrow. At what Not time? Not early. I think okay. One. My crudas last two days now. Yes. For you know what's crazy? One sana. thing I will say, I don't no. get crudas. <gasps> what's your cruda routine? Yo quiero saber what is your cruda routine. I need to sleep all day. I have to sleep. Okay. Normally... On the weekends, yes. And I drink on stage. Mm-hmm. I can't drink like before. Liar! <laughs> the bajista primavera is laughing. Because he knows. So I, I can't drink that much. Like, I can't, not, not as much. Okay, wait. Anyways. Like, when Vicky was on stage, it was, I could, I would drink more. Because it's the responsibility of, okay, if I get fucked up. You too. You go. Uh-huh. No, no, no. You, you know. Echatela tú, or if I see her really fucked up, you know, yo le bajaba. Yeah. Now it's like me. And I'm like, oh, sh- oh hey, shit, you know. So when I get fucked up, you know, the next day, on the weekend, let's say I get fucked up on a Friday. Then the next, I need to drink una coca waking up. Okay. And it needs to be Coca-Cola, everybody. A soda, pop. We say pop in Chicago. Coca. Una coca and something greasy. But you need to have a bathroom, you know, close, because if you're on the road, y te dura la cruda todo el día all day but then I sleep I, I, after I eat that I try to sleep as much as I can 
and then you know saturday you know it's good does your husband day. like that we work together okay because lately my boyfriend's exactly like you a mí no me gusta que se emborrache mi novio porque sé que el próximo día no voy a saber de él oh that's i don't like it when he's drunk but i could be drunk i think i've had a hangover maybe like once in my life what did you do i was dying that day pero lo que te digo que mi novio y su mamá son de esos tipos de personas que si tienen un pinche hangover todo el día desaparecen. Oh, todo yeah, I do too. I yes. hate that. So then the other day, when was it? Saturday, we went to go get a, um, martinis. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Sunday, my yeah. suegra was like, mi hija, venga. And I'm like, I don't know, but I only had like three martinis, I think. Maybe like three times four. Four. No, but but, but I, could, I used to be able to drink more. Yeah. So then I had, in the next, I felt, I felt like shit. So then I had to sleep a lot and sleep a lot and then, I watch novelas, the Turkish ones. Okay. Did you know that it finished already on Tuesday? I don't watch them. I, I, no, my I grandma, do. okay, so like when my grandma comes from Mexico, se queda aquí conmigo y siempre me anda, mijo, ponme el VIX, ponme esta novela en Netflix, ponme esta novela en YouTube, because she watches them on YouTube. My grandma's really good. Like, there's times where she'll be upstairs and I'm down here and we're like in the middle of a movie. And then it's like a new device paired to your TV. And I'm like, ah, abuelita. Because literally she'll pair to my TV. She? she, yo quiero decir como unos 70. She's pero like, es my buena para el teléfono. My dad's es bad. Buena. My dad's bad. He's like, he sent message. So check this out. A long time ago, like, we had a. A tocada, right? Y no nos tocó bien el empresario y dijo, vale, es un culo el empresario, vale pura verga. Se lo mandó el empresario. En el, el empresario se lo mandó a mi papá y dice, para atrás el mensaje y dice, yo entiendo su frustración, don Armando. Mm -hmm. I was so embarrassed because we see him all the time and I'm like, so my dad's not too good with technology. You know what it is? My grandma likes to be up in the chisme Hell so yeah. she'll learn when it comes to like ponme el facebook ponme en instagram ponme en tiktok ella quiere saber del chisme TikTok. she's on tiktok you know what's funny like i had made her a tiktok account maybe <laughs> like two years ago y yo pensaba que nomás estaba ahí la tiktok account like i was like oh my god my grandma doesn't use it like i just made it in balde pero hace unos días ella está en mexico ahorita me hizo like y comentó en mi TikTok. No. And I'm like, ay, ya supo. Ya What supo. What part of Mexico is she from? Nayari. Somos de Nayari. Beautiful. So you have beautiful women. Yeah. So my dad's from Villadalgo and my, uh, my mom's side is from San Blas. So pure Nayari. Pure Nayari. Okay. Puro Nayari, amigas. Quiero hablar un poquito más de, obviamente, tu actualidad. Um, ya eres, you guys, quiero hablar, quiero hablar y ando bien borracho, ¿eh? Hey, no, 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 no. Tú me has estado dando toda you know la what? tuya. I'm already buzzed. I don't, I, I'm telling you, I'm like... Dale otra. Dale otra. Me sigue poniendo a mi amiga si yo sigo emborrachándome y ella como si nada y luego va a terminar el episodio oh, y va a decir que tomó. By the way, tomó. my daughter is a super fan. Because I texted her and she's like, Mom, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going with Alan. She's like, Oh my God. And I'm like, chill. Oh, ¿Cómo se llama? Marisolita. Marisolita, ¿cómo estás? It's embarrassing. I'm like, stop being... Stop being a groupie. No, I'm a big fan of you. And honestly, like when, because you do tell like, me that through text though. Me dijiste que tu hija me miraba. Yes. Cuando yes. me dijiste eso, me puso como un poquito más like, okay. Like a little calm. Oh, because she told me not to wear this. She's like, no, you look amazing. She didn't like it. She's like, Why? mom, wear the cargo pants and wear like with the body suit because she tells me what to wear sometimes. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. I already have this on. I, I want to wear this. Me gusta porque estás very with the theme. Azul is like the, the color. Quiero platicar un poquito de tu carrera como solista. Okay. Hace unos años te lanzas como solista. How was that for you? Oh. ¿Cómo fue el tomar esa decisión? Was it hard? ¿Cómo pasó todo eso? She's like, otro shot. That Cheers. Is a, that is a, such a stressful conversation. Mm. Well, my, my sister has a baby. Mm -hmm. Her first baby. I think she's like 40 when she has. He's two now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, at 40. You know, you know what? I don't feel like working right now. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? What do you want to do? So I was working as a Los Copos de Durango without Vicky. So then, los empresarios de men are like, no le, voy, no le puedo hablar completo porque nomás viene la mitad. And I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Yes. So then I got this offer to go open for Julio and Alfredo. And so I went to Mexico for like about almost a year. And I'm like, you know what? This is not for me. Let me go back. And um, it's been very, very, extremely exciting and stressful. And right now I'm doing Duranguense, but in Mexico, con Julian, I was doing banda. Okay. So I do have a banda in Mexico, in Mexico that's going to come 
which there's son 22, which is a lot of people, a lot of fucking people. So I think I'm going to start doing that banda maybe by los jaripeos when it's summer in the East Coast. I, I don't know yet. This is a primicia. So um, it's been very stressful, but it's been very rewarding because I was very irresponsible as horoscopos. Everything came fast. Like not fast as in like Vicky took care of everything. Okay. Vicky's She would just boss. tell you what was going yes. on. Yes. Boss, um, direction, hasta con Gloria, you know, direction. Like she was like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, fuck. Now like, you know, but I'm by myself. I'm like, so now I'm the boss. And they call me, Hefa. They even say that to me. And I'm like, I don't like them calling me that because I like the, I was always like the party. I wasn't even allowed to go to practice because I was like loud. She's like, funny. she's going to come waste her time. Yes, that's what she would say. And I'm like, now it's like, oh my God, I have to be responsible. What the fuck? So yes. Was that a hard decision for you to take? Obviamente tienes toda una carrera con tu hermana. ¿Cómo fue para ti mentalmente decir, sabes qué? Me voy a lanzar como solista. My dad's very upset still. He's very hurt. You know, it was very hurtful because it's his band. It's going to be 50 years, you know, that it's going to be with the band if we were still working. He said, no puedo creerlo tanto con mis hijas juntas. And I'm like, but Vicky doesn't want to work. And they don't want to pay me as horoscopos because it's, estamos incompletas. Um, and they offered me this, so I'm going to take it. So I've been doing this for two years now. I mean, I started again in October because I was doing, you know, um, living in Bogota, but it's been very difficult. It's, it's been a process for myself personalmente. ¿En qué manera? Personalmente, as in, you know what? Yes, I'm old, but I've been very fortunate because everything's been a relajo and fun for me. Now it's like, holy shit. So I have to be responsible. Even when I work out on the weekends, I'm like, muchachos in, on the chat, voy a hacer ejercicio, quieren venir. It's like, they find that, you know, like, oh my God. She's a role model, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck, but then when I get fucked up and see, you know, see. Anyway, so, like, for the songs and stuff like that, and to actually be on stage without Vicky has been a big, you know, it's difficult because I still miss her, and I don't know how to move on stage, but it's been, it's been a fucking process. It's been a process for her as well. Sientes que tomando esa decisión en este momento en tu carrera es harder, um, ya que están super established. Obviamente la gente It's las mira juntas. Anywhere I go, they're like, no va a ser igual si no está Vicky. And I'm like, fuck. How do you feel about It's that difficult. como solista? It's difficult because now, you know, I start incorporating, like, for example, I play the accordion, I play the saxophone, I play the keyboard. I, I start playing different shit, you know, to maybe entertain them and makeup. not, you know, think, make up, you know, so like, oh, no está Vicky, maybe I'm entertaining, you know, going, where the fuck is she now, you know, but it's, I don't know, I think it's a process and it's going to take maybe time for people to accept it or maybe not, you know, maybe it won't. She wants to come back, she's not ready yet and when she is, I'll be ready, you know, but I don't know, it's been, it's, it's been a learning process. How many years tienes ya con Vina Solista? ¿Como dos años? No, because, Uh, 2000, what are we, 2004 right now? 24, yeah. 2023, 2023, beatbox. 2023, I was in Bogotá. 2022 is when I went actually solista, okay. like the whole year. So then barely again, last year, October, I started como Porque solista. Porque hiciste ese Instagram, pues así anunciaste, ¿verdad? Me acuerdo, yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. was that? Like, obviamente, you typeaste todo, and then you posted it. Was that scary? It was scary. I cried, and my dad was upset, and then my sister was like, you know, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, but you're not ready. What do you want me to do? Yeah. I need to do something. I I don't have little children. I am, yes, I'm a grandma. You know, I'm, I love what I do for yeah. a living. And I love being on stage. I don't like recording. I don't like recording, but I'll do it, you know, because I have to do that. But I love being on stage, and I, I'm not too sure how long I, I will last. Was it hard to tell her? ¿Cómo le dijiste a ella que querías I didn't tell como... her. I didn't oh, se enteró como todos. Yes and no. So, for example, um, I started working as horoscopos, and then, for example, I started doing different stuff, and then I'm like, you know what, dude? I need to talk to you. And, and my husband's like, you need to tell them. And I'm like, So, But at this point, I was back in full mommy mode. No, full mommy, no working okay. at all. It's been three months. And I'm like, dude, I, I can't do this shit. You know, it's a, a big compromiso that you're not here. They don't want to pay me. They, they're like, no, Marisol, you know. 
And I'm like, okay, but then when a singer of a regional mexicano dies and he's not on stage, nobody says, yeah. no hay que pagarle, he's dead, you know. I'm sorry, I'm being honest. No, no, you no, know? it's honesty, yeah, yeah. But then me, that my sister's still alive, you know, she's taking her mommy time, no viene la otra, no le podemos pagar completo, viene la mitad. And I'm like, what the fuck? Has there ever been times where they're like, no te vamos a pagar at all? Yes, a bunch of times. And it's, you know, there's people that are like, oh, ya tienes muchos años. No, it's still happening, you know. It would happen as horoscopos, even in our prime. Yeah. Wait, shut up. Cuéntanos yeah. un poquito de eso. How, give us una experiencia donde obviamente ustedes fueron y se presentaron y no les querían pagar. Holy shit. This was in Mexico. Nos pagaron con pan. I swear, I swear my mother that's in el cielo. Yes. So then my dad, we were in the bus, right? We had just had our first pre We were in the bus sitting and they're like, Uh, muchachas, queremos hablar con ustedes, our manager. And I'm like, he would only come when it was good events or something bad was going to happen. He was there. Uh, viene ese empresario and he brought a shitload of bread. I guess, I don't know if he owned, I still don't know. Hear this, Frank. This happened like in el estado de México. I'm not going to say where, but this was some fucked up shit. Lechuga knows this. You know about the pan, right? Que nos pagaron con pan. You don't know this shit? Okay, so there was an event It was super packed. I don't know what happened. I never asked because we would never ask. We had, yeah. a, you know, a manager, a rep. He's like, muchachas, viene esta persona. And he came with like a bunch of bags. And I'm like, damn, it's, I love bread. I love bread. You can like, this is a bonus. It's yeah, a bonus. yeah. I don't give a shit. You know, there's bread. I didn't know at this time what was going to happen. You know, like, I don't give a shit. Let him come in. So we <laughs> had our boss. We're sitting there. And then Vicky's like, damn, I see some conchas. And I'm like, yeah. Anyways, so then they're like, no dinero. And I'm like, like this. What, what, what? You're like, las conchas no van a pagar la renta, amiga. But we didn't know that yet. No hubo dinero. Y vino el señor y nos trajo pan. And I'm like, okay, so then the, el señor del pan left. Right? He left. Viene our, our manager. Our manager's like, no hubo dinero. Que el pan. And I'm like, what do you mean el pan? But since I never dealt with money, no, nothing till now, to this October. I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. That's why I have like, So I have a friend, my best friend. He's been my best friend like for 20 years. He's like, siempre te veo con una vena aquí. I'm like, I'm so fucking stressed <laughs> out. Stress. I'm so stressed out. So he's like, um, trajeron pan para pagar. And I'm like, what do you mean pan para pagar? So my dad's like, mija, pues no hubo dinero que trajeron pan. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't say anything because I, I, I didn't know because we would play every single day starting in like, is it September, October that you play every day kind of in Mexico? And then we would swap to US only once in a while to like weekends once in a while. So then I'm like, Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't even know who paid us last weekend. So then they paid us with bread. They paid us with fucking bread. Bread is gangster, though. I love bread. Was bread. it good, though? You know what? My dad's like, más vale que se lo traguen todo. <laughs> so que valga la pena. At that time, Vicky was 200 pounds. Now she's 130 pounds or 140. Oh, shit. Yeah. She was a gordita. A gordi buena, I was telling her. A gordi buena. That's the a word. Gordi a gordi buena. Cheers to the gordi buenas, amigas. En verdad que sí. You and I are porque dangerous yo together. cuando pesaba 321 libras, porque eso es lo que yo fui a llegar a pesar, yo nunca I me decía, you. yo me, yo me sentía bien pictures. gordi buena, aunque no lo estuviera. Ah, estaba you gordis, were. estaba gordis, pero no buena, amiga. I'm like, I esa think la diferencia. So. Because there's like people, like, there's people like, you know what's funny? Well, not funny. It's like, there's people that I know in my life that are like, you know, overweight. Y en verdad que sí representan el gordi buena porque están yeah. gorditas y pues están buenas. Pero yo nomás era el gordis, no la buena, porque en verdad que buena no estaba. Ahora ya que me miro ya ahora sí, pero en ese entonces no. I think you no. look beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Y you know what? Like the camera, because I'm looking at you right now, no te da justicia, like... Honestly. Oh, thank you. Honestly. I'm not telling you like the... Tú estás hermosa. No, Tú... I'm, oh. For everybody, I did a little bit of threads. So my stepson that's here, he had to leave the room because he had... He had he needed a breather because he saw like the eels. Yes. So when we're older, you need to do... You know what? It makes me yeah. feel good. How do you feel about surgery? You know what? I'm very... Now that I'm this age, now that, now that I'm older, I'm really afraid to go under anesthesia. Okay. So then I'll do everything very superficial like... For example, Botox. I just did, yes, I just did, I did threads today. Yes, but Monday I did Botox and a facial and some other stuff. So I did, today I did sculpture because since I lost a lot of weight, so then I look like this, so then I look like big from here. It was not cute. So then I'm a little bit hinchada, but you said I don't look. But no, I, you I don't am. look hinchada. I'm trying to see where the threads are you at. You see the holes here? I have holes here, look. 
You don't see oh, any holes. I see it. So then I have a holder and they te levantan. Pero que te ponen an actual oh, thread? I just heard a crack. <gasps> I just, yes, right? So then they do, okay, they do a thread. It looks like a fish. You know the ones with the fish que tienen como like a bunch of like uh -huh. piquitos? It dissolves and it produces collagen. So then te hacen, te anestesian a little bit here. So te levantan and you're like, oh, you feel it come out like hasta por el culo. Seriously. You're like, <gasps> like that. So then here, here, and here. And then I did sculpture here. And yeah, you know, I believe in a lot. In, uh, but I'm really afraid. Me personally, I've never done a lipo. Mm. nor a BBL if I had those huevos to do it I swear to God it's I would scary. do it I'm so because I've heard some really horrendous stories I would love to do it so, yo también a mí me encanta que el botox que I've it. had love. you know I got what was like your earliest a qué edad botox, 25 baby botox no, 25 pues yo, yo menos yo really? a los I was still in high school when I got my lip injections shut up yeah Let me tell you when Tenía we got. Como 17 años cuando agarré lip injections. That's that is crazy. Gangster. I used something called. Oh my god! I went to um, Alto. That's okay. a bad place for me. It's a horrible place. Horrendous. It's like a little stick. I don't know what it's called. It even covers tattoos. When you have a bruise, you what know brand? what? If I have it here, can you give me my makeup bag, please? Cab on Dior, qué brand? No, no. I'm gonna give it to you. And Alto is only a bad place, amigas, porque sales because we waste con a lot of money. It's Vas the black con una cosa. makeup. Let me see if I have it there. I think it's Derma. Oh, I don't have it with me. I've covered bruises like that. I've gone like lip, like you know. Thank you. No, por, no para decirles, sí, amigas, que cuando yo te vi entrar, Nada. yo me la esperaba toda moreteada, toda hinchada, but no. No, I did it today because you know I do it in process. Yeah, yeah. Because. I live in Chicago, you know, but my husband, you know, you know, his mom lives here. So I come. Yes, I fucking love my suegra. So I come and I spend it with her. And she's like, she gets mad at me when I do. She, I, didn't, oh, I didn't tell her today, your grandma. So she she knows. And she's like, she looks at me. She's bad. So for Top Chef, a lot of the, the stuff that I cooked, she showed me how to do it. And like chile rellenos and stuff. You have a great relationship with your suegra. I really Porque do. me estabas contando de que ella te cuida, que mm -hmm. she doesn't mind it. How's that? Obviamente no poder tener una relación con tu mamá y luego tenerla con tu suegra. Do you feel like that kind of healed like the child you? You know what? I do feel that my suegra, you know, feels somewhat the void of my mom because I don't remember. You know what's even worse? That I remember parts of my mom i remember more her dying the process which is really horrendous but i can't there's like very pinpoint moments of my mom that i remember during my whole childhood i don't know if, i don't know if that makes sense maybe i blocked it myself yeah, i don't know it's trauma block yeah uh, it's it's really weird if you ask vicky if she remembers my mom she doesn't even remember and she was in kindergarten do you feel like you still remember her voice Porque es una cosa que... no i do not oh, i don't shoot. which is you know what Holy shit, nobody's ever asked me that. You know, I don't, I don't. I don't remember her voice, but I remember her being very nurturing and it's really funny watch. Not funny, but it's admirable. My mom died on Easter. So on Easter Sunday, she died Easter madrugada Monday. I don't know if that makes any sense. So then my mom, every Easter, she would do Easter eggs. So we would call her them in the... Todos los años. That's Con something I... Con confetti y todo eso. Yes. So then we would put them all over the yard. You know, the yard is el patio, you know, in Chicago. You know, we don't have very good weather. So, but, that, but around that time, at that time, the weather was different, you know. So you knew winter, spring, summer. Ahorita es un desmadre. So my mom still did. I'm assuming she felt very sick because she was going through chemo. And she still made time to do the eggs. Her hide them. Oh. My primas hermanas, que, my primas hermanas, you know what's funny? I don't know if you feel like this, but I have very few best friends because we were talking about that with my stepson. My one of my best friends, which he's snoring right now, is my husband. Sorry. My daughter, now that she's older. Uh -huh. you you and I, are, you know what? Okay, so you invited me to your birthday party, uh -huh. and I played that day. I would have gotten lit that day. My birthday party was like one of those days where like it was so much fun. It's coming soon, no? It's coming, yes, What in March. It? In <gasps> March. Wait, what day? 25. Oh. It's on a Monday this year, you guys. Not what are you going to do it? What day? You know what's funny? I'm not going to do I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to do. 
I I wanted to have a party, but then last year I had a really big party for my 25th, and I'm like, oh, is it gonna be too played out? So like, if it's Monday, I, party? I will come on a Monday because I work in that weekend. Okay. Yo lo voy a festejar el following weekend. Porque watch this. Ah, I'm like, I have not updated. I don't have anything for the following weekend yet. I will oh my God. block the fucking day. Period. Uh, yes. Wait, really? Oh, Pinky Promise. Pinky Promise, amigas. I keep on que lo miren, amigas. I'm going to block it. I'm blocking it. It's a Monday. No, but the following, the following weekend, weekend. You're okay. gonna, you're gonna I want to do something. I want to have like a little house party or something. Una fiesta. That's dangerous. Quiero algo no tan grande, pero tampoco tan chiquito. Ah, le quiero algo bien, because it is my 26th. And you know what's funny? I share birthdays with my best friend's brother, like my childhood best friend. Y este año, el, el cumple 21. So este año le dije, ¿sabes qué? You get the weekend before, like the weekend of. And I get the weekend after. But I'm very like, I don't know what the hell to do. Like, I want to have a party. I want to rent an Airbnb. Sepa la verga lo que vamos a hacer, you guys. Pero Marisol va a estar aquí. Fuck yeah, yeah. Ya dijo. Si no está, amigas, a ustedes le dicen. Yes, I am. I will plan something. If you really are down to come, voy a plan. Ahorita hago una fiesta, amigas. No tenían planes, pero hago una fiesta. Yes, I am. Water. Mm. Water, amigas, que se ando pedo, güey. No mames. I'm like, I'm embarrassed. I didn't get drunk since the last time in, in Bar Louis. Yo y Marisol y el público. Ah, tuvimos una conversación you off of what? camera. If we would have been in high school together, we would have been friends. <gasps> Fuck you. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. I love us both. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, isn't it? Okay, now that you know, you know, you're like, you're a fucking public person. Thank you. You're a fucking gangster. Mm -hmm. I admire you. I follow you. My daughter is a fan. My stepson is a fan. Literally. Conjunto Primavera is a fan. And, um, you know, it'd be fucking bad. We, we, we got yeah. suspended, expelled. I mean, no it's like you, que you click. You, it's, it's, I love you. You know what's so funny, amigas? This is the <clears> first <throat> time maybe like in a year that I've been drunk on the podcast. Because oh, Marisol, you the same one, amigas, amigas, right, watch, watch. Exagerar, Marisol me trajo como mm. six beatbox. Me trajo esta bolsita. We're literally, we're so drunk we're that we're literally sharing. And I'm like... <laughs> Drink the rest. No. Well, sure. Watch, drink it, watch. drink it, drink it. Mm -mm. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You back and forth. Back and forth. I know, amigas. Did you Nada que back you and forth. Me lo cabe. Hell yeah. Hey. Ahí está. My I know, amigas. Like, yo tengo vergüenza porque me siento why? bien borracho. Me I too. I I already peed like three times. Yes, I don't even want to fucking leave. Hemos tenido una pinche plática, amigas, que en verdad, like, siento como que... I wish we could have had this with you guys, pero no. Era una de esas pláticas wait, wait. que teníamos when que tener... Wait, when you have your show camera. with public and you better invite me. La voy a invitar, amigas, cuando ojalá... It's gonna happen. Wait. It's gonna happen. Wait. Do universe... It really did. Public, huh? hell yeah. Uh, I'm like, imagine <laughs> Public, gangster, with gangster artists. No, pero en verdad que sí, te tengo, tengo mucho. Estoy súper contento que estuviste aquí. En verdad que sí. And ya para terminar esta entrevista, amigas, yo quiero preguntarte una de las últimas preguntas que siempre le pregunto if, a todos. If we can both answer. Espérate, esta la pestaña y la siento. I don't know. Amigas, Espérate. no Espérate. more drinking on let's talk pendejadas. Porque eso es lo no que more. pasa. No, pero en verdad, yo Holy quiero shit. ver en dónde te miras tú en los próximos cinco años. You know what? Holy fucking shit. Mm. What the fuck? Se nos acabó el beatbox, amigas. I amigas, was, si ustedes I no miran a Marisol, and whatever the hell I end up doing for my birthday, si no la miran aquí, vayan y díganle, amigas, porque no. ella me lo, no. ella me dijo, y no me importa si sale un pinche trabajito de ahí. I don't give a ahí. shit. I'm blocking it because you invited me, and I saw it, and I'm okay. like, okay, so I was, my daughter, he's like, do where do we shoot? Together. Together forever. You know what? I think this is the way. The way this is literally. A swerp it, swerp it. <laughs> this is literally my favorite, my favorite flavor, fruit punch. I don't. <gasps> Holy shit! That one's good. Wait. That one's fucking good. It tastes like a Jolly Rancher. 
it's dangerous. Why does this look like a beatbox sponsorship? <laughs> like literally, les juro que no, amigas. Les juro exactamente que no. Drink it. Mm. That one's uh, really fucking good. A ver, Marito. Oh, I gotta tell you, so Chupitos yes, yes. was my madrina de Arras. Okay. In my wedding. How was that? Was, Chupitos. You know what? I fucking love her. She's gangster. She's fucking gangster. Um, Ay, llegó Chupitos. You know what? She was dressed like normal. So oh. then everybody in the party, <laughs> and then she got really fucked up. And uh, <laughs> it, it was fucking crazy. El bajista de primavera. Wait, can we sing her song? I love her song. I love her song. <gasps> I fucking, you know what? I fucking adore her. And I don't know her song. It's, ya llegó Chupitos, ya llegó el desmadre. Y el que no le guste, que chingue a su, a su madre. madre. I love Chupitos because I feel like she has like a little song just like me. Yes. Do you know my song? Probably not. No, I. I don't even know my. You know what? I blew so, so antes muerta que sencilla. Sometimes I have like a really. Can we sing that? Do you want to? What do you want to do? Let's sing. Okay. Antes muerta que sencilla. Hay que sencilla. Hay que sencilla. Y es la verdad, porque somos así. Nos gusta ir en la moda que nos gusta presumir. Que la verdad, tú digas tú de mí, de dónde es el milagro San Francisco de París. Y hemos venido a bailar para reír y disfrutar. Después de tanto y tanto trabajar, a veces las mujeres necesitan una poquita, una poquita, una poquita, una poquita libertad. Antes muerta, que sencilla. Ay, qué sencilla. Ay, qué sencilla. Antes muerta que sencilla. Ay, qué sencilla. Wait, can we do Ay, cinco sencilla. minutos? Uh, wait. Remind me. I, I can start it. it. Ah, me. Go for it. Okay. Fuck. Okay. Ya me cansé de estar jugando a las escondidas. Ya no, no me busques, busques aquí estoy. Ah. Si no te di la cara, no, no es cobardía. Día. Ya no me busques aquí estoy. Uh, Pero. Ah, I'm right. drunk. Take some. <laughs> this is a drunk show. Have hey. you had a drunk show before? No, I feel like this is the first time. This is fucking gangster shit. Hey! Fuck yeah. No. Ya me cansé de estar buscando la... No, ya me cansé de estar... Buscando las escondidas. Ya, ya no, no me busques, busques aquí estoy. estoy. Si no te di la cara y entonces nos no cobardía. Ya que no me busques aquí estoy. Y... A mí no se me da... Esto de la reversa. La verdad me da pereza y, y más aún, aún si se atreve de, de ti. ¿Qué quieres decir? Me da cinco, cinco minutos, minutos desahogate. Should we drink again? <laughs> so ya para terminar esta entrevista, amigos, dime, if your music career wouldn't have taken off, ¿qué es lo que Marisol estuviera haciendo hoy en día? You know what? I have no fucking idea, but I love animals. And I think I, I would have been, I don't know if a vet tech, a vet. I went to college. Okay. Okay, so when those locos hit, um, I was a senior in, um, in college. And then my dad's like, termina. And I'm like, how do you want me to fucking finish? I can't go to class, do my classes, you know, and tour. I can't. So Vicky had a double major. And with the fucking... Um, Bake up because she was so fucking intelligent. Okay, check this out. I'm going to talk about Vicky. There's somebody that's super important in opera in Chicago that wants to go see her specifically. And Vicky's like, I can't leave my family. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is your problem? We weren't even big yet at that moment. No he pagado los locos, but the person that went to go see Vicky specifically, cuando estaba gordita, 200 pounds, went to go see her, and she said, no. I don't know who the fuck she is. Maybe Vicky knows who she is. I don't know who she is. And I'm like, dude, god damn. She's like, maybe she would have a long, longer career. Yeah. Because regional, I think, for women, not for men. And it has to be like certain groups like Primavera, that's here. <laughs> yes. Um, Tigres, you know, Intocable, that I fucking adore. Um, Ricky, you know. A bunch of people. But for women, yeah. no. It was hard. 
Paquita is probably the only one I can say successful. Nobody else, I can't. Because goddamn, she's fucking old. No, she's gangster. Paquita's fucking gangster. Yeah. So my my sex player is Guadarrama. Es hijo de uno de los Guadarrama of los Wookies. Oh. Yeah. So he's always touring with them. So I have to fucking look for another one. Sorry, Pepe. When, you know, he's there. We have a convenient, you know, three, four months, you know, and they have a residency. So he's going to leave again. And I have to look for somebody. But then when it ends, he comes back with me. Has he came back? All the fucking time. Period. All so, the fucking time. I just want to say I'm so grateful que estás Ooh. aquí. I'm so happy que estás aquí. You better aquí. fucking tell me when it's your birthday. March you 25th, I'm birthday. doing something that weekend. I will text you. I will you. fucking block that shit. When you told me, I was working, but I will block that shit. Thank you to Marisol my for being here pleasure, with me today. Honor. Porque honestamente, this is a dream come true. And the most bad you got. Literally. And me too. <laughs> with that being said, amigas, if you guys don't already follow wait, Marisol. Wait, will you fucking have a show? Do you have public and you're fucking gangster? I'm bringing you, you better on. Fucking show. I will come to your show. I will La come to your show. Yeah, what the si fuck? Si no viene, ustedes están aquí de testigos que sí va a venir. Hell yeah. That being said, amigas, espero muchísimo que les haya gustado este pinche episodio. With that being said, amigas, if you guys don't already, make sure you go... Dice lo que estoy diciendo. With that being said, amigas, espero que la sigan on all her social medias. And also, don't forget to follow me on all of mine so you guys won't miss a future episode. And with that being said, las quiero mucho. Y uh, las miro para I don't know próxima. who the fuck I am right now. Bye, guys. Yes. Hell yeah.